안녕하십니까? 어, Dr. Hello, Dr. Steve Easy Hanson. I'm Dr. Kim Kyung Won. Today, I'm going to talk about the casket. The casket, I believe many people already have used it and uh, have experienced the kit. It stands for Crystal Approach Sinus Kit. Its main characteristic is to safely and easily hydraulically elevate the maxillary sinus membrane without damage or perforation of the sinus membrane. To place implants uh, at the maxillary posterior region using the crystal approach and do the bone grafting. Let's look at the characteristics of the casket. First, cast drill itself, the top of the drill has the inverted cone shape and the edge is rounded. So when you use the cast drill, it doesn't cause or minimize the damage or perforation. You can penetrate into the sinus floor. There's a stopper so that you can drill to the depth that you want. Secondly, hydraulic pressure is used to safely and easily elevate the sinus membrane. The hydraulic pressure tool is included. Third, bone carrier and condenser can be used. Crystal approach can be used for the bone grafting in the sinus. Bone graft can be prevented from being contaminated from saliva and others, so secondary infection is prevented. Bone graft can be easily done over the sinus floor using the bone carrier and the condenser. Components of the casket. Basically, there's a drilling tools in the cast drill. Second, after penetrating into the sinus floor, sinus membrane can be easily elevated, hydraulically elevated using the tool. And the bone carrier and condensers are in the bone graft tool. Three types of tools are available. First, the guided drill. Basically, it is to mark the drilling location. Basically, 2 millimeter stopper is recommended to do the marking. The recommended RPM is 1000 to 1500 RPM. The length is the same as the cast drill. Next, the twist drill. After the initial drilling, before using the cast drill, this can be used. In the case of the twist drill, on the panorama or CT, after evaluating the remaining the residual alveolar bone height at the maxillary posterior region, you need to under drill by one millimeter, one millimeter less than the height to be safe. Its specification is the same as the cast drill and the stopper can be used to adjust the length of the drill. Cast drill, basically it is designed to penetrate into the sinus floor, maxillary sinus floor. As I said before, its edge is rounded and has very good cutting efficiency or power. So, without damaging the sinus membrane, you can penetrate into the sinus floor. That's how it is designed. At the top, it has the inverted cone shape of a bone lid, which is designed to minimize the damage to the membrane. Next, if it is drilled at a low speed, the side of the straight drill is designed to collect the autogenous bone chips. The recommended RPM is around 800, then you'll be able to drill easily without problems. There are a short one and a long one. The diameters of the drill uh, is uh, 2.8, 3.3, 3.8 soft bone, and 3.1, 3.6, and 4.1 for normal bone.
The stopper is very important when it comes to the castrial to lift the sinus membrane when you attempt to penetrate into the sinus floor it is, is used to, to control the depth of the drilling. The stoppers are 2 to 12 millimeters in 1 millimeter increments in the specification. There's two here and uh, you can see two, three, four. It's um, marked like that. When you connect the stopper, the cast drill, the protruded drill length is uh, indicated there and uh, they are color coded and laser marked so you can easily do the drilling in the depth that you want using the stopper. Next, the depth gauge. As I said before, the same length stopper used for the cast drill is connected here, then 0.6 millimeter more protruded. After the drilling, this can be used to check whether the sinus floor is penetrated or the membrane is damaged using the tactile sensation. So uh, the stoppers can be connected here as well. Next, hydraulic membrane lifter. Simply put, after penetrating into the sinus floor, hydraulically, the sinus membrane can be safely lifted. For this hydraulic membrane lifter, 3cc syringe is recommended. The pressure is not high. The sinus membrane damage is minimized when lifting. In general, normal cell line is uh, infused, but not infused all at once. The silicone part should be adapted to the drill hole so the cell line is not leaked. First, you need to infuse 0.5 cc and aspirate. The blood inside can be suctioned out. If there is no membrane damage, you will be able to feel the negative pressure. With a crystal approach, it's basically a blind approach, a conventional osteotome. When you use it, we cannot accurately detect the tearing of the membrane using the Valsava maneuver. Uh, you can check and stop the procedure, but if there is a minor damage, you will not be able to feel the tearing. But if you do like this, 0.5 cc is infused and then it's aspirated, you will be able to feel the negative pressure. Whether there is a membrane tearing or not it can also be detected that way. After that, 1 cc is infused and aspirated, followed by 1.5 cc infusion etc. If you lift the sinus membrane this way, the wider base sinus membrane can be lifted. After the bone graft, the bone formation can be made on a wider host bone base. Next, the bone carrier. It is shaped like a funnel. 3.1 drill hole uses the 3.0 carrier. 0.1 millimeter is shorter in diameter. So, graft material can be put into the funnel shape safely and it is hydrated and pushed up. The tip length is shortened. In the past, the tip was longer. When you push it into the sinus membrane, sometimes membrane was um, damaged, so the design is um, changed recently. Next, the bone condenser. Bone material is put into the bone carrier and hydrated. There are two diameters for the bone condenser, 1.1 and 2.0. 1.1 is used um, when bone graft material is blocked. 
So that is uh, to prevent that, to push it up continuously. Diameter 2.0 is used to lift up more bone materials. Next, bone spreader. This is an optional tool. When you do the implant placement, the graft material is blocked and uh, stopped being pushed in. Then bone spreader can be used to spread the blocked bone material. There's a recommended sequence for the casket surgical procedure. I will try to explain it in an easy way so that you can understand better. There are basically three sequences of drilling in our recommendation, and I will use some diagrams to explain it. The first method, before we penetrate into the sinus floor, cast drill diameters are increased step by step. In the last one, fitting the fixture diameter, the thickest diameter drill is used to penetrate into the sinus floor to minimize the sinus membrane damage. Thicker cast drill would be used to penetrate into the sinus floor without damaging the sinus membrane. First the guide drill, then twist drill 5 mm, 3.1 cast drill, and then 3.6 cast drill, 5 mm stoppers. So stoppers are changed to advance into the sinus floor. In the diagram, as I said before, if the residual bone height is 6 mm in normal bone, with the 2 mm stopper, the guide drill is used. Still, 5 mm high bone remains. Using a twist drill, we go up to 5 mm. Cast drill is used 3.1 and 3.6 using the same 5 mm stoppers. Then 3.6 is used to advance into 6 and 7 mm. Sinus floor can be penetrated into without uh, damaging the membrane using the hydraulic elevation. The second method, the cast drill length is increased until penetration into the sinus floor. Cast drills are used to penetrate uh, the sinus floor, followed by the hydraulic membrane elevation, and the final drill is used to do the widening. The same example, 6 mm high normal residual bone, guide drill, 2.2, 3.1 drills, and 5, 6, 7 mm. That is, the diameters increase until the sinus floor is penetrated. After confirming the penetration, hydraulic lift is done, and using the final drill, fitting the diameter of the implant to be placed, the drill hole is widened in this method too. Next, method 3. This is the combination of method 1 and 2, previously explained. The cast drill's diameters are increased. At the same time, the lengths are increased as well to easily penetrate into the sinus floor. Uh, the drilling sequence is reduced. In this way, if you get used to the cast drilling, you will be able to do it easier. The drilling sequence can be greatly reduced or simplified. Like this, at the beginning, 2 mm stopper is used for the guide drill, 5 mm, 2.2 twist drilling. After that, cast drill 3.1, with uh, 6 mm stopper, 3.6 wider diameter, and the longer length is used. Then drilling sequence is uh, simplified, followed by the hydraulic elevation of the membrane. Out of uh, method 1, 2, and 3, you can choose whatever fits you, whatever is convenient for you. 
If you get used to using cast drills, you would prefer to use the method 3 because it has the simplified sequence. Next, easy hands-on. The objectives of the easy hands-on on the model, cast kit will be used through the crystal approach, sinus lift will be made, bone materials will be inserted to place an implant. Using the casket, sinus flow will be penetrated. The main function of the casket, the hydraulic membrane elevation will be done safely and bone grafting followed by implant placement in this hands-on. In this model, number 2526-2T are missing. As I explained, casket drills will be used to penetrate into the sinus floor. After that, hydraulic elevation tool will be used to safely lift the sinus membrane. After that, bone carrier and condenser will be used for the bone grafting and the fixture will be installed. Through this hands-on, you will be able to see the, this process. I'll come back to the hands-on. Thank you. Casket hands-on. In this practice, 25-26, two teeth are missing at 25. The residual alveolar bone height is 5, and at 26, it's 4 millimeters. But the alveolar bone is slightly sloped near the adjacent teeth. Therefore, we need to go deeper to penetrate into the sinus floor. Now let's start the hands-on. The initial drill, guide drill 2.0 is chosen and is connected to the handpiece. For the guide drill, we need to check the location. 2 millimeter stopper is connected to identify the placement location. Now it is connected. The guide drill tip is protruded a little bit. So it is marked black on the white model. At 25 location, the marking is to be made. In number 25, on the x-ray, the residual bone height is 5 millimeters, so twist drill is chosen. The remaining bone height is 5 millimeters, so 1 millimeter under drilling is to be done. So 4 millimeter stopper is used. Two point two twist drill. At twenty five, four point five millimeter fixture will be installed. Cast drill diameter three point one is chosen. Three point one. Using the method 3 that I explained, 1 mm advance will be made, 5 mm stopper is connected. So 5 mm stopper is used. The residual bone height is 5 mm. 5 mm stopper is connected to the cast drill. So the sinus floor 
will be penetrated or not will be checked. So depth gauge will be connected with the same stopper. In the depth gauge, the same stopper is connected. 5 millimeter stopper. The drill is 5 millimeters, but the depth gauge is a little bit longer, 5.6 millimeters. And that this will be go going into the drill hole to check whether sinus floor is penetrated or not. As you can see, it is not penetrated yet. Next, 4.5 fixture will be installed, so the cast drill diameter 3.6 is used, 6 mm stopper is connected. Because the sinus floor was not penetrated with the 5 mm stopper, The drill hole is not opened yet, so depth gauge is connected with the 6mm stopper to check whether the sinus floor is penetrated. The residual bone height is 5mm, but uh, there's a slope near the adjacent tooth, therefore uh, we need to go a little bit deeper than we expected. The final drill is 36 the drill diameter is not to be increased. The stopper, 7mm stopper, is used for the drilling. Seven millimeter stopper. Now I feel it is being penetrated. 7 mm stopper is connected to the depth gauge. When it is uh, connected, 7.6 mm protruded por portion is observed. The sinus floor is not yet penetrated. We thought it would be 5 mm. We use up to 8 millimeter stopper because sinus floor is sloped and the alveolar bone itself is also sloped. So 8 millimeter stopper is used. Now it is drilled. Once again, 8 mm stopper is connected to the depth gauge to check. As you can see, partial penetration is confirmed. Now, hydraulic elevation will be done. Uh, partial penetration is done on the slope and the hydraulic uh, elevation is to be done. Hydraulic lifter is removed and connected to the silicon tube. Next, cell line will be infused. A lot of air in the tube is not very good, so 3cc syringe it will contain enough cell line and it is connected like this. Then, if you see here, there's air inside, cell line is infused to remove the air and it is sucked out. The 3cc syringe is filled with up to 2.5cc cell line. Using a needle holder, the hydraulic lifter is adapted to the drill hole. Two millimeters is slowly infused and aspirated. The 
like this, 0.5 is infused. So this way, hydraulic elevation is being done. How the sinus membrane is lifted will be observed by looking at the inside of the model. Like this, it is being lifted. Slowly, it works. The sinus membrane is being elevated. Hydraulic elevation is finished. Now it's turn to do the bone grafting. The final drill was 3.6. This bone carrier is inserted into the hole and from the back we can adjust the angle into the bone carrier. The graft material is inserted. Sufficient bone graft material is inserted using the bone condenser. This is pushed in. 1.1 millimeter diameter is used. Then no blockage will be made. 2.0 diameter condenser is used to insert more quantity of the material without encountering the blockage using the bone condenser the graft materials are inserted if internal bleeding occurs the bone materials would be dispersed so you use the hydraulic elevator and aspirate and then the bone materials would come down. Next implant is to be placed using the mount driver. 4.5 diameter by 10 millimeter long fixture is to be placed. So the mode of operation should be checked whether it is fixture installation mode. So the torque is high. Using the hand wrench, positioning will be done. Using the hand wrench, it is fully seated. 30 newton centimeters, enough torque has been achieved on the model. This is the TS fixture and it will be placed up to 1 millimeter below the bottom of the bone level. Two implants will be placed. On the four hydraulic lift, if we make two holes together, water leak can occur. So it is inserted before number 26 drilling is done. 2.0 drill, the guide drill, will mark the placement location. 2 millimeter stopper is inserted, connected. The drill is made. At 26, the residual bone height is 4 mm. 2.2 twist drill will use 3 mm stopper. 
one millimeter less than the height of the residual bone. Drill hole is made. Cast drill. 3.1 diameter cast drill and 4 millimeter stopper is connected to advance 1 millimeter. Three point one and four millimeter stopper. Four millimeter drilling is done, and the, the depth gauge is connected with the four millimeter stopper to check whether the sinus floor is penetrated. It's not penetrated yet. Next. 5.0 will be done, but first 3.6 cast drill and 5.0 millimeter stopper is connected. Cast drill is increased by 1 millimeter in diameter and in the length as well using the cast drill. Now, 5 mm stopper is connected to the depth gauge to check whether the sinus floor is penetrated. Part of it is penetrated. It's not completely penetrated. So, uh, let's advance a little bit more. 5.0 fixture is to be installed, so 4.1 cast drill is to be used with the 6 millimeter stopper for the drilling. Now I can feel the it is penetrated. Now it is connected to the depth gauge. The sinus floor, part of it is penetrated. So hydraulic lifter is to be used again. And it is adapted to the hole. Two millimeter cell line is in the syringe. Infused and aspirated, infused and aspirated. Hydraulic lift is being done. Now it is lifted. Let's have a look at how it is lifted by removing this model. The mesial fixture is placed. When you do the hydraulic lift, you can see the membrane is being lifted. Aspiration. Negative pressure is formed, so so it doesn't move anymore. We will do the bone grafting again and uh, place the implant. Bone material is inserted and it is pushed in with the bone condenser. Due to the hydraulic lift, the water is coming out. In this case, as I explained, hydraulic lifter is connected and aspiration is done. The water and uh, bone materials are coming down uh, due to negative pressure. It cannot be suctioned very freely. Perforation is not made as you can see here. Now 5.0 by 10 millimeter fixture is placed. The bone is very hard because it's a model. Now 
implant will be placed on the final stage with the wrench. The stability is good enough. One millimeter under drilled. The fixture is placed. Relation with the opposing teeth, they are properly placed as we wanted. Let's have a look at the inside of the sinus by removing this. This is the model. As you can see, bone materials entered into the sinus and sinus membrane is lifted as you can see in the sinus model here the pre-mount is to be removed using the open wrench the stability is good enough so it doesn't matter but i'm using the open wrench to to hold it 1.2 driver is used to remove the mount Next, it is removed by hand. During surgery, healing or cover screw can be used. KS3 implants are placed deep enough, one millimeter below the inferior bone level. Now the surgery is finished. Dr. Steep, easy hands-on. I've introduced casket. I believe you already have used it online, and many doctors know about casket, but through the hands-on, as I showed you, if you understand the casket properly, regardless of the residual bone height, in various cases, you will be able to do the bone augmentation on the sinus floor to place implants. I believe if you are skilled in using casket, it will be very helpful in placing implants properly. Thank you. Q&A session. Let's look at some of the questions we received. Dr. Park asked, when we do the surgery with the casket, how can we check the sinus membrane perforation? As I explained before, when we do the casket surgery, hydraulic lift is done. When membrane is perforated, 3cc syringe is used to push in 0.5cc followed by aspiration. If the sinus membrane is perforated, the air in the sinus comes into the syringe creating air bubbles. Negative pressure is not formed. So, crystal approach is a blind method when you use a conventional osteotone and if you feel the sinus membrane is perforated, you can stop the procedure, then it's okay. But the problem is when the membrane is actually perforated, but you proceed with the procedure thinking it is not perforated based on the Valsava maneuver or other techniques. If you can use the casket and the membrane is perforated, use the hydraulic lift to infuse the cell line and aspirate, air will come into the syringe and negative pressure is not formed. Even though you cannot see, indirectly you can tell for sure if the sinus membrane is perforated or not. So during the surgery, if you can tell for sure the sinus membrane is perforated, bone grafting should stop. That means uh, short implants can be placed or lateral approach uh, forming a window can be 
used to see the perforation directly with your eyes and do some repair and continue with the surgery. If you cannot do the lateral approach, you should stop the surgery and you need to wait three or four months to try it again. I don't know whether that answers your question. The next question. What is the minimum height of residual bone in the upper posterior to do surgery with a casket? In the past, we determined the, the lateral versus crystal approach depending upon the height of the residual bone of 5 millimeters. If the residual bone is uh, higher than 5 millimeters crystal approach, if it is uh, lower than that lateral approach. But recently, as casket is widely used, even when the height of residual bone is 2 or 3 millimeters, crystal approach is used. So, in my opinion, rather than the height of the residual bone, the implant's primary stability, that means the initial torque, whether it is enough or not, is important. Even though the height of the residual bone is 2 or 3 millimeters, crystal approach is allowed. Personally, I believe the age of the patient, whether the patient is very old or there is a denture in the opposing teeth, or in the most posterior region, a tooth like number 7 is there distally, this need to be considered. The height of uh, residual bone can be low for the crystal approach. If the patient is young and it is free and distally and the opposing teeth are healthy, we need to have a long-term perspective. Uh, we need to do the bone augmentation. If the residual bone is low, lateral approach can be used for the bone augmentation. Therefore, uh, the height of a residual bone cannot be the absolute criteria for lateral or crystal approaches. Various factors need to be considered to make the decision. Next question. During the casket surgery, how can we repair the perforated membrane in the sinus? I touched upon this in the first question. During the casket surgery with the hydraulic lift, if you can tell, there is a definitely perforation in the sinus membrane. You should not just um, push ahead with the surgery. There can be a risk of infection. For the perforated membrane, you need to change the approach to lateral approach to check and observe the perforation of the membrane. I repair using the tissue glue like fibrin blue, and the repair should be done and proceed with the surgery. If you cannot do the lateral approach, you can place the short implants after the bone grafting or wait three or four months to try it again. Due to constraint of time, I'll conclude here. If you have further questions, uh, please send that to us. We will try to address them to the best of our ability. This concludes the casket uh, easy hands-on. Thank you.